Hello folks, this is Jay, and welcome back to Caves of Cud. Yeah? And to me playing Caves of Cud, to my videos, and to my streams. I haven't done this in a while, like for a few months. There were some folks who are actually, I've seen the occasional comment who was like, Hey, are you okay? And uh, yes, I am okay. Um, there have been a few changes in my life that um, have resulted in me having a lot less free time and also in sort of a shift in priorities that did not really favor playing video games on the internet for prolonged hours um, in favor of other things. So that sounds all a bit ominous, but it really isn't. I'm actually doing really fine. I'm doing better mentally than I have in years actually right now but uh, I have wanted to come back to this because I really enjoy it you know believe it or not I enjoy doing this and that's why I've been doing this for so long actually um, so yeah here I am and what better game to come back with than my perennial favorite my always, my game that I always come back to, which is Caves of Cut. I haven't played this in the entire while that I've been off the web, <laughs> uh, off YouTube and Twitch. So um, it's been a bit, it's been a bit, and I probably need to get my feet back under me. We're gonna start a new game, and we're gonna essentially, you know, this is gonna be sort of a new season. Uh, before I just dropped off the face of the earth, I was kind of changing the way I structure my videos on YouTube, which is like, I'm not going to throw them all in a big J Place Caves of Cud thing with numbers in the whatever hundreds, uh, but I'm going to do sort of little mini seasons to make it easier to just jump in at some point. And uh, the last one that I did and also the first one I did of these, was the Moonstair Beta. And uh, that has been left unfinished, unfortunately, that run. And it would be ridiculous to go back to that beta now, because we are way in other territory now. There's been a lot of Feature Friday since then. The saves have been rendered incompatible, obviously. It's part of the stable build now, the whole Moonstair thing. And it has been for a few months now. And uh, I don't actually know what's going on in the game right now. And I guess we're going to find out. Uh, but we're going to have to start anew. Which is a bit of a pity, because that run was really um, going places, kind of. Was really starting to become pretty cool. And a lot of people have watched this. You know, I had pretty good viewer numbers. Pretty good clicks on those videos. And I'm sorry to the... To all of you who allowed themselves to become a little invested in that run just for it to lead nowhere and uh yeah i'm i'm actually really sorry i that kind of sucks and i wish i could have done that different but differently but it didn't it didn't work out that way and uh i think it's probably best to just go from scratch now to do another run and make that one as good as possible, right? And uh, I have I have not seen any Moonstar stuff yet. I have not seen a lot of sort of the new endgame stuff. So I'm still pretty excited. I am way behind the curve right now, obviously. But hey, we're gonna make it work, right? Somehow, we're gonna make it work. Of course, we're, this time we're gonna use classic. Last time I made the weird mistake of accidentally picking roleplay, uh, which I never do, and I do kind of want to play with permadeath. That's just a me thing, when uh, I do like, I don't have to have, I'm not a hardcore kind of person, like necessarily, but with this game I need my permadeath, I need my consequences. Otherwise something is just missing. So um, yeah, we're gonna play classic. We're gonna start a new character. I think I'm going to do the thing that I wanted to do anyways, which is to play a modified type of um, the character that I was playing last, which is we're going to, our main things 
are going to be multiple legs and heightened quickness, which means that we're going to be pretty damn fast. So we're going to be able to have a lot of move speed and a lot of quickness, which uh, is going to be interesting. Before, I used to play mostly with multiple legs and triple jointed as sort of my main things and obviously electrical generation. But I think this will be more interesting. I think this will be, yeah, not more interesting, but this will be interesting. So we're going to do, yeah, if we do electrical generation, we can't do triple jointed. Um, although amphibious, which is that we use more water. You know what? Two thirds more water than usual. That's okay, actually. I think we can, that's a lot of water that we use, but I think we can make it work. So let's be amphibious and triple jointed. So the only thing that is actually different right now is that we don't have sort of the, you know, I was using stuff like night vision and beak and thick fur and that kind of stuff. I think that's the only difference actually. Yeah, and we just use heightened quickness instead. Oh, okay, I mean, that's fine. This could, this should be actually a more, um, a more effective build because the heightened quickness is probably going to do a lot for us. We're going to see. So, I'm going to get plus two on that. Let me see, toughness, I don't know, 14. Of points into intelligence. What am I doing? 20, 20, 20. 18 intelligence. 14 ego. Something like that. That should work. I don't know. Am I doing a bad, a bad thing? Do we already have the. Yeah, we already have the additional points in there. We could go higher with that. No. Oh no. Now yeah, maybe not, because that's going to be... You know what? I think we're going to be fine. We're going to increase agility a lot with... Uh, with triple jointed. I don't think we need all that strength, actually. Uh, well, let's think about what we're going to do. Whatever, it's fine. I think we're going to be okay for now. Willpower is again our dumb stat, but, you know... Sometimes I'm not happy with that, but uh, we're going to make it work. We're going to have a random name, and we're going to start in Joppa. And uh, wow, this feels like putting on old sneakers in the best way possible. I'm kind of excited to be back in this game. I haven't played this for so long. It feels like coming home. Hello, I'm in search of work. Ah, pleasantly familiar. Very pleasantly familiar. Okay, so let's do the stuff. Disliked, hated by Beatles. Okay, um, don't know if I'm a fan of that. Let me take a look at you. Admired by the Seekers of the Sightless Way. Interesting. Okay, sure. Let's do a water ritual here. The Seekers obviously hate us, so that's okay. That's not going to be enough for that. Villager hated by the Mechanimists. Oh, show of Mammon, that's okay. But hated by the Mechanimists, I don't like that. You know what? I think this is the lesser. You hated by the Beatles. Mm. <sighs> yeah, minus 100 is okay. It's fine. It doesn't matter. I should have checked beforehand, but. Okay. Let's learn harvestry. It's just a nice thing to have at the start. I like to do that. I like to do the water rituals if it's not too bad. If the reputation hit you take is not too bad. Sometimes it's not bad at all. You know, it just, it just gives you a bunch of positive reputation that we definitely want. Let's, let's rob all the houses. That still works. They haven't changed that. Nice little tradition. Um, we have an iron longsword, so that's good. Nothing in our left hand. Probably gonna have to use some torches, which is okay. We can do that for now. We don't have any night vision or anything like that, but that's that's fine. I don't think I'm going to use the iron buckler though. Okay, do we have anything else that is interesting? We have a weird artifact. That's a freeze grenade, Mark One. Okay. I think we can just get rid of all this stuff. Yeah. Don't really need that. Okay. 
Ooh, there's some stuff here that we're not going to get just yet. We're going to get stuff that is as good as that. In due time. We don't need to actually go out of our way to get that, I think. It's okay. You know, like, having this kind of stuff early on is nice, but it's not necessary. Okay, so, you can have... I don't really have that much, actually. Iron buckler, and uh, <laughs> that's kind of it. That is kind of it. Alright, let's take a look at this to get the Reshev news, which we can cash in at a later point in the game. There's a person in the game who wants to know everything about Reshev. Who is a Sultan of Yore. Uh, okay. So we have our first historic site here, which is kind of a generated dungeon. Where we, we most likely find an artifact. It's going to be a low level one, obviously. This is sort of the guaranteed first one. It's always a low level one. The later ones can become pretty gnarly, actually. Okay, well, let's get the Argive quest. It's actually the most important one. This is the first leg of the main quest. The thing with Red Rock is actually not part of the main quest. That is optional, but it's nevertheless something I like to do first because it gets us ready for everything else. Yeah, that's it. We're not very... We're not very strong or anything just yet. So we're going to be nice and careful. Also, we're going to have to use a torch. Kill some snap jaws. Let me see. Wet iron longsword. We already have a wet iron longsword. So that's not useful. So we're just going to slowly inch our way forward. We're going to kill basically everything, like even the bats and stuff, just to get the the first... Gaining the first few levels is pretty important. Oh, there's a young ivory. And cloth overalls, and a weird artifact. What am I wearing right now? Leather armor here, yeah, we're going to stick with that. I'm bleeding right now from the young ivory, but that's okay, all right. Oh, there's some stuff going on there. That's mechanimists, right? Yeah, that's a group of mechanimists hanging out there. They are friendly, so that's okay. So the weird artifact is the other thing that Argyle wants. Let me just quickly check what this is. It's a stun rod, okay. We, don't, we have no use for stun rods, so we can sell off the stun rod. Hello, level two. Here we go, nice one. So, um, yeah. This is going to be a bit different now, because we have essentially four things now that we can increase. All the time, and I'll have to think about it. I think... You know what, let's put this into multiple legs first. Oh, uh, maybe not. Ah, oh, well, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. We're going to increase all of these anyways. Okay, we can harvest the dread roots and get their tubers and destroy them if we can't harvest them. That's how you do it. Generally. Because sometimes they will drop a tuber even if you can't harvest them. That's just a drop on death as well. A potential one. Not a super high chance, but it's also not nothing. And again, these tubers are pretty useful for crafting some things. Okay, so we have luminous horseshoes. These are sort of the glowing mushrooms that are around here. They sometimes, you know, they are, I think they're associated with that group here. Hey, buddy. Let me take a look at you. Admire, dislike Benuli sentient beings. You have extra dimensional sandals. That's some pretty sweet stuff. Um... Admired by Kia Cookie and loved by the Mechanimus. Mechanimus reputation to have that is actually not bad. Because we do want... Let me check the factions real quick. Uh, Mechanimists... Yeah, we're at zero. We want uh, to get that to... I think that's 250. 
so that we are welcome in the holy places. We're going to get some reputation with them anyways, but we need to, at some point we need to gain entrance to one of their holy places. And it's a lot easier to do if we're just allowed to walk in there instead of having to murder everyone, essentially. I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm despised by cannibals, that's okay. Newly sentient beings are kind of a little bit iffy on us now, but nothing bad. Oh yeah, I have a secret. I actually do have a secret, interesting. Okay, get some additional reputation. So we are at 150, that's pretty good. That puts us in a good spot. That will make a bunch of things easier later. Uh, can I trade with you? What do you have? Oh, you have some, you have some stuff. I think this is a metal folding chair. And these are injectors. Injectors are gonna be something that is is gonna be useful, but it's just too expensive right now. We can't really trade. Trading is not really not really a thing. I wonder if the zealot up there in Japan knows that there's a bunch of their homies down here. You know? Maybe they should hook up. Okay. Furs club nothing. Let's rest. Let's be careful at the start here. Okay. Do the discharge. So because we have electrical generation, we can discharge our electricity all at once, which is pretty useful in certain, you know, if we need to, that does a lot of damage all at once, especially if we get this up a lot. So that can be pretty useful. Later on, we are going to use the electrical generation mostly for powering weapons. But for now, it's going to be a good safeguard for being attacked. And at some point, we're probably going to use pistols, rifles, and heavy weapons. So we're going to get at least basic skills in all of them. But that's going to be a thing for later. We don't need to worry about that too much right now. We're going to start with other stuff. Um, what we need here is a dueling stance and swipe. Because we need the disarm skill need to be able to disarm enemies. We can also do that with pistols, but this is a more surefire way to do it. Pistols, it's kind of a crapshoot if it works or not. Although it does work. It does work. There would be a way to play this character without playing a warden, actually. Could be kind of interesting. Maybe I should do that at some point. You know? and use something different. I think this would be kind of interesting if we weren't dependent on long blades. It would be harder to do the specific thing that we want to do though. Which is a spe you know, which has something to do with the disarming. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. We're gonna see. All right. But for now, we're just gonna press forward. Be careful, okay, not to get our, get ourselves killed. This is stun rod, vinewood sap mask. You can put that on the face. I don't think it actually does anything. Protect against noxious gas and vapor. I don't know if that's an actual, if that is, if that is just a description or if it actually does anything. Never bothered to find that out actually. If it actually does protect you or not. I don't know. Okay. Let's go ahead. I think for the time being, we're going to put stuff mostly in um, electrical generation and multiple legs. And these other things, eh, we're gonna see. 
We're going to try to get all of them to 10, which will take a while, obviously. Like, having a fourth of these... It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. And we're going to rapidly advance electrical generation, I think twice. Heightened quickness. I wonder... Oh, yeah, we're going to do this twice. The other... The other rapid advancement... You know, there's a maximum of two other rapid advancements that we can get. Um, I think putting that in multiple legs is not that useful, but maybe heightened quickness would be good. I think that would actually be better for the other rapid advancement. Because at a certain point we're going to have move speed that is high enough to... outrun most things and like the the little increase in move speed that the even high even higher level of multiple legs is going to get us is not going to make that much of a difference i think um the returns will diminish a little bit we do need the additional electrical charges though for some stronger weaponry later on Essentially for the... Once we get the best gun in the game. Which I... This might have changed at this point. I'm not actually sure. But there you actually... We actually want as much charge as we can. But again... Getting it up to 19 with three advancements is not really useful. Because it's unlikely that we're actually going to get there. In terms of level. Because leveling is going to slow down extremely in those higher levels so so i think two rapid advancements are kind of enough for that another thing that we want to do another thing that we want to do is uh and i'm going to do that right now we're going to get tinkering because we need to be able to build some stuff so we're going to be able, we want at least Tinker 1, probably Tinker 2, which we're going to get. 23 intelligence is not impossible for us to reach. And we should put a point into intelligence, actually. Um, but an important thing here is also deploy turret for us. Actually, that's part of the build. We want to be able to do that because it's going to help us to get things that we want. Okay, you know, if, if you watched any of my recent runs, I've played this character a few times, so. What did I want to do? No, I'm, now that I have basic, the, the tinkering category, I can talk to you and I can actually see what you're going to sell me. Here, what these data disks are and none of these are anything that I want. Okay, uh, we're looking for... Blueprints, actually. That's what we want. Blueprints for modifications. The other stuff you can learn with some tricks. Yeah, the other stuff we can learn with some tricks. This stuff we can't. Okay. And another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to absolutely prioritize armor value. So the this one. This is dodge value. We're not going to... I'm not going to... I'm going to take any penalty on dodge value if I can increase armor. That's not going to actually... You know, that may be a bit counterintuitive since we are playing a quick character. Why did I press numlock? I press numlock. Classic roguelike blunder um that may be a bit counterintuitive since we're playing a character with a lot of quickness but that's not going to influence either our move speed or our quickness actually that's that's completely irrelevant for that we have, we do have high dodge value to start out with but uh yeah which is kind of cool. And we're going to get there again. The late game stuff. Ooh, a location. 
of another historic site. Nice, interesting. Um, the late game armor stuff is going to be pretty good in terms of not having that much of a dodge value penalty. So in the late game, we're going to increase our dodge value again. But until we get there, we're going to prioritize, prioritize armor. I've never made good, really good experiences which, uh, with going for dodge value exclusively. Or with sacrificing AV for DV, essentially. Because what happens when you go for high dodge value is that at some point something is going to get through and it's just going to murder you because you don't have the armor to reduce the damage you take from that. You know? Like at some point something like a Rhinox is just going to charge you. And if you have high armor value, you might survive that. If you have high dodge value and the Rhinox happens to get through to you, through that dodge value, uh, and hit you, you're just dead in one hit and you can't do anything about it. And that's usually something that has happened to me <laughs> when I played DV characters. So yeah, basically the reason why I don't really do that anymore. Okay. So since we have, ooh, heightened move speed. Oh jeez, oh jeez, yes. Uh, there's a bit too much going on here. Let's run away from that. Recharge our electrical charge. There we go. That's more than that. And that's the cool thing is that... Oh, Jesus Christ. It's already there. I... It was a chameleon. Didn't see the chameleon. It actually did work. Just by the tile having a color that made it tough to see. That's pretty neat, actually. Okay, genome enters an excited state. We're going to rapidly advance electrical generation by three ranks, which means the points here we are going to put into other things. But for now, we're going to increase our move speed a little bit. We're going to go to long blade. We're going to get swipe. Um, we are in defensive stance right now. Swipe in defensive stance does what? Push all adjacent creatures back one space. And trip opponents. Yeah, like this. What are you? A beetle bum. They look different now. They didn't used to be blue and black. Interesting changed the sprite. They look much more interesting. They used to be just brown. They're neutral beetles. They're not aggressive even if the insects faction is hostile to you, which they should be. There's a slumberling. We're going to leave that slumberling the heck alone. Ah, Christ. The bat, however, did not leave the slumberling the heck alone, which is always a problem. We're fine, we're fine. The slumbering, slumbling is going to fall back asleep. Yeah, it is sleeping again. We don't want the slumbling to attack us, essentially. It can probably, we might survive a hit of the slumbling at this point, but probably not. Can basically one shot us at this point. The good thing is that the slumbling has narcolepsy and it's going to fall asleep. After a bit. Just have to take care not to wake it up. Classic. Okay. Put the lacquered leather cap on. A salt encrusted amber tipped staff. Plus one to hit. Interesting. Huh. Amber tipped. That might be new. Don't know if I've seen amber tipped yet. Or an amber tipped staff yet. I think Amber Tip just give you, gives you the plus one to hit modification. I think that's what that was. Not sure. Just going to pick it up. Maybe it's valuable. I don't know. It's something that is 
interesting in some ways. So, oh, there's another another slumberling. We have two slumberlings on one map. That's a crimson hood that does dodge value instead of armor value. Again, not doing that for the time being. Maybe at some point, like it's been a long time since I tried playing a DV. Amen. That's the third slumberling. Jesus Christ. Three slumberlings on one map. That's not something that usually happens this early in the game. Or well, ever, actually. Okay. At some point, they cease to be a problem and become just a good source of experience. But uh, we are not there yet. Like, not at all. We have some crocosins, which are better than the moccasins. Because they give us additional armor value. And we love it up. So, um... Yeah, we're going to put that into multiple legs, get that up as far as we can. I think the next level, the next point, we're going to put into something different. And that's probably going to be the heightened, the heightened quickness. Because we can't do multiple legs or electrical generation on the next level. Because again, the electrical generation is rapidly advanced, so we're just going to get the points until we get to... What is that? Six. With that. And again, that stuff is restricted, right? It's capped at four to a level. You know, with... Gaining higher levels, the cap is going... The mutation cap is going to go up bunch that's kind of how this works just a balance thing for this game one that works pretty well actually otherwise mutations would be would be able to become very overpowered for certain parts of the game i guess okay Some mutations become really strong at higher levels, so, you know, it's, it's got to take a bit to get there. Okay. So, we're now going to just follow the Underground River to Red Rock in order to do the quest. There's a slumberling. The slumberling is asleep. That's good. We do not want to wake the slumberling. We're not equipped to deal with slumberlings. It's kind of cool to have them. You know, slumberlings are essentially higher level enemies that you encounter early in the game. But the narcolepsy thing offsets that. So they pose a an absolute danger. Where am I actually? Four strata deep, okay. There's the stairs down here, which is cool. So they pose an absolute danger, but one that you can avoid. But you still have to be careful, because it might still happen that one comes after you. So this is just five stars I did now. This is just the underground. Uh, oh god, there's a thing that I do not want to fight right now. So we're not going to explore that any further. That would just be a diversion anyways. We don't need to do that just yet. But yeah, let's keep going. All right, good. Yeah, now we get the stronger enemies here. Swipe the discharge. Now we're level seven. Yeah, stronger enemies means more experience. So can't do that yet. So we're just going to put that into quickness. It doesn't increase quickness by that much. It's only two quickness. Two additional quickness per rank but having that at 10 will be pretty good actually it will be pretty fast that will give us a bunch of but essentially yeah i think that that has an effect on basically every action so we're just going to be a lot quicker i guess um i'll have to look at the tables actually to to see Okay, uh, what am I going to do? Should we go for Tinker 1 already? Oh, we could. Let's do that. 
Item mod six fingered, not one that I necessarily want, but it is interesting. So we're going to get that. We have another hundred points remaining. We're going to put that into cooking and gathering. Also, we need to actually make some food. Can preserve stuff now, but for now we're just going to whip up meals without cooking with ingredients, actually. Is something... Something is shooting at me or the gypsum. Don't know what shot at me. Probably just a seed spitting vine. Yeah, it's a seed spitting vine. Usually there's nothing too gnarly down here, but you never know. Sometimes the procedural generation hands you curveballs. And getting good at Caves of Cud is to be ready for that. Painted bead of bracelet, that's pretty cool. That's going to be worth a bunch. That's nice. Uh, oh, the engraved stun rod has a cell in it. Let's take a look at it. Some more Sultan history in there. Let's learn six fingered. And that's a fidget cell, a power cell that you use to power items that require electrical charge. You know? That's where at some point the electrical generation is going to come in. But it doesn't just work. The item needs to have a modifier called jacked. And that's something that we're going to have to learn to... Not have to learn. We can find a ways around that. That's why I want the building turrets, for example. But I would like to be able to mod items with that. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for the data disk for that item mod. Having that is going to make this run, essentially. Going to make a lot of things a lot easier. Okay, weird artifact. That's a flaming bronze longsword. Nah. We already have a steel longsword. We don't want to downgrade, even if it is flaming. You know, doing a little bit of additional fire damage is nice. But it does cost, it does cost charge, electrical charge, and it doesn't offset the better, the better attack values of the, of the steel weapon. Okay. I never really go for the flaming and freezing stuff. You know, having like a, hmm, it might actually, I might actually try that at some point. Like once you go to get to the higher tier stuff, if you can make a jacked freezing sword, something like that, that could be pretty fun to freeze things with your, with your attacks. I don't know. Okay. I think we've explored everything here. We're still looking for the, the corpse with the stuff on it. It's not here yet. Level 8. Okay. I'm gonna put that into multiple legs. We're already at 5 with those, so we're kind of getting there. Kind of getting there. Going to use this to get further into the into the cooking and gathering tree. It's something that you kind of want to max out, no matter what. I usually max that out with any character I play. Being able to do all the buff stuff is pretty. Oh shit. Zap you, kill you, kill you, kill you. Ah, I was killed by the slug snout. Ah, early slug snout, always a problem. And I'm dead. That's that. Such it goes. 
We're going to play the same character again. The character doesn't work. Um, it's just a thing. I got caught there. I thought it might have just been a seed spitting vine, but it was actually a slug snout. And slug snouts do a ton of damage in the early game. So, yeah, that was that. Okay. Dang. Dang, dang, dang. Let's do the thing again. Disliked by unshelled reptiles, hated by bears. For reprogramming their favorite robot. That's not a nice thing to do, my friend. Uh, do I have the quest? Yeah, Shakina and Watervine. Hated by flowers for reprogramming their favorite robots. Hey, you folks just like doing that, don't you? What is it with you and robots? Did you also reprogram a... F oh, Hindran of Bela. For faithfully adapting one of their plays. Interesting. There's an interesting history there. So this is only positive. There's no reason not to do it. Harvest tree. Here we go. All right. Defoliant grenade. High explosive grenade. That's kind of neat. Might just give them to Argive though. To get that over with. Okay. Ooh. Mmm. Riches galore. Okay. There's a chainmail here. I do kind of want the chainmail actually. Chainmail is pretty good. Ooh. Carbite battle axe, but no. I would need a long sword. Well, that's not going to be useful. Let me see if I can afford this. I can actually with the stuff that I have. It's okay. But yeah. We mean that we are pretty deficient in water for for the time being. Which is okay, generally. Let's just sell off the scrap. It's fine. We're going to find enough. 53 is fine actually. With some other builds, you start out with way less. But uh, the chainmail is a pretty good early, early game, early game armor. So yeah, because it only has a, it has three AV and only a penalty of one on the DV. So that's okay. All right, cool. Let's get this. Yes. <coughs> Let's get this. This will always get us the location of the historic site, which this time is way north. Okay, I'm going to get there at some point. I'm kind of thinking whether I should actually go overland for Red Rock. You know what? I'm going to go overland for Red Rock and maybe come back. Through. Yeah, I'm going to come back through the caves. Yeah, can actually kill some fish here to gain a little bit of... Yeah, it's 25 a pop actually, that's not that bad. To gain a little bit of experience. How much do these give me? Also 25. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to kill those to get basic tinkering and see what Argive has in store. Okay, nothing here. Just go fishing for the experience. All right, there we go. There's a few more, oh, there's a lot more. This is actually, I don't actually remember them giving 25. That's actually kind of a lot more useful than I remembered. Okay, level three. Like just for these initial few levels. Uh, I'm going to put that into strength for now. I wonder if that's actually a good idea. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I think. Okay. All right. Alright. 
so now that we have tinkering, we're going to get back to archive because now we can see what all those data disks are. I could just do overland travel for this, but fine. We're going to go on foot. It's okay. Going to do it the old fashioned way. We're gonna hike. Okay, interesting. Fitted with suspensers and nulling. Both are not ones that I would actually super want. Yeah. Astrally burns, it's weirder. That's kind of neat for not getting whisked away. Handrails are pretty good as weapons, but you know, that's way too expensive. Also, that might be Tinker 3. No, it's Tinker 2, okay. But we're going to find that stuff at some point anyways. Fitted with suspensers. This item is weightless when powered. That's Tinker 3. Oh man, I did not know that fitted with suspensers. There might be some... There might be some really interesting stuff that I'm not seeing right now that you can do with that stuff. It's weightless, that can be anything actually. If it's powered, then it's weightless. That can be like even super heavy stuff. Yeah, I see. Ooh, yeah, you could... Oh jeez, you could use that to... Um, to use like swarm racks and these super heavy weapons. I see where this goes. That's Tinker, Tinker 3 though, so with this character we're not going to get it actually. Tinker 3 is 29 intelligence. You would have to build your character around that. But um, we're not going to get 29 uh, intelligence with this character. But wow, that is super interesting. Forgot about that because it's going to be powered anyways. Especially when it's jacked. Ooh. I wonder how much um, how much power that would draw for an item as heavy as, for example, a swarm rack or one of these super heavy guns. Huh. 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 Let's go down. You know, essentially, we've taken the same path just overland, and uh, you know, there's basically nothing there. Small milky tube. You know, like taking the underground river is obviously way more dangerous. That's a salve injector, nice, okay. It's obviously way more dangerous, but it's also... You also gain a lot of experience doing that. Steel battle axe. So I need to put the leather gloves on, that's nice. We have the chain mail. Not much else. We're going to remove the iron buckler because we don't really... We have some shield skills, but not enough shield skills. That's maybe something for later. If we have points left, basically. Uh, we can actually get all these. The three of these. And then shields will become actually pretty useful. Okay. But for now it's fine. A nullworm skull. Nice. Gives us one more AV. It's basically like the leather cap, but it gives us an additional ego, which is good for trading. I think they're also worth quite a bit. So, yeah. All right. Let's explore this. Red Rock is just sort of like your basic dungeon, essentially. It's a very straightforward area. Usually, when you're starting out playing Caves of Cut, you probably wouldn't take the Underground River towards Red Rock, but just take it back. But I usually, I usually just take it towards Red Rock once you get a bit more experienced in the game. But again, it's more dangerous, right? As you've seen, like I've died on my way. There's stuff that can catch you off guard, and it totally did. Again. Also, I haven't played this in a while, so... Again, it feels like riding an old bike, but still. I feel like I am a little bit wobbly. On the thing. You know? 
I haven't exactly outgrown it, but oh, there's a gun here, a chrome revolver. We're gonna use that. We have no ammo for that, but. That's okay. We're gonna get some ammo for that. So, beaded bracelet. The beaded bracelets are items that sometimes Snapjaws will have. They're trade goods, and they're pretty good for trading, actually. They're not bad. All right. Well, they fetch a pretty price. Okay, kill the bear. So let's explore the rest of this. Yeah, and going this this way around is definitely the safer choice, but, you know. I guess I just sometimes get impatient. Ooh, I just see the little magazine thing here, and that's kind of neat. That's pretty cool. That's kind of a nice little... That's new. I haven't seen that before. Okay. I haven't noticed any particular sort of mechanical changes yet, but... Yeah, I've only scratched the very, very, very surface of this game. All right, we're going to do electrical generation. So we're going to do the same stuff again. That's a smiling sun mask. We're going to put that on the face. Gives us an additional dodge value. Again, as I said, I prioritize armor value. But if I can get an additional thing in there, and I don't have to sacrifice armor value for it, obviously I'm going to take it. There's no reason not to. There's an albino, albino ape. Um, I think they're going to be okay. <coughs> yeah, it's not hostile. This is Snapjaw Fort. It's a kind of this procedurally generated structure that you sometimes find even in the outside world. Um, there's going to be a bunch of Snapjaws in there and some low-level items. But um, I think there's... A very high likelihood that you find a snapjaw fort oh, here in Red Rock. They've put that in at some point. It didn't used to be this way, but uh, they put that in. Yeah, it's just a good low level dungeon now, actually. So that's cool. All right. I think we did it. Let's go to the stairs down. Here we go. And here we are. I think this is, yeah, this is where the underground river is. Where the underground river starts. This is the north end of the underground river. And uh, we're going to take that way back. Did I have the Critter Corpse? Yeah, I did. I do have the quest. So. There's a lot of these things around here. Yes, okay. Also get some stuff so I have tinkering already um, yeah let's get swiping yeah there's the critter some electrical charge through all of you there's the glow white cultist that always appears here we have a Gershling Corpse, we're going to take one of them. We're going to bring them back to... Joppa. Brackish Slime. Disgusting. Let's wade through Brackish Slime. Alright. Recharge. We're going to explore the entirety of this map. Um, we're going to destroy the Dreadroots. We're also going to destroy the Jilted Lovers. They have a much lower chance of also dropping something that we want, which is a Lover's Blossom. It's a very low chance that they do that, but it's something that is good. 
enables us to make an injector that is very useful to have because it's an injector that allows us to regrow limbs it's the uber nostrum injector which you can get via other means by trading or by just finding them and we're going to get one of them from finishing the red rock quest but uh you know you never know what happens we might lose a limb on the way at some point it's definitely something that is possible in this game and if we do that we better have a way to grow that back So whenever we can get Uber Nostrum injectors, we should go for it, essentially. There's other ways, you know, there's a mutation called regeneration that we do not have. But if you have that, you can regrow lost limbs. It's quite nice. I think you need to get it up to level five. for it to do that so it's a nice thing to have it's not something to build your build around but it's one of these nice to have things probably not going to get it with this character because we have a lot of points to spend on these mutations so we're not going to get a new mutation anytime soon but yeah getting a new mutation costs four points and uh, you get a choice of a random selection of three. And that's not a lot, you know? So you can't really count on getting any specific mutation that you don't have from the start. Hey, there's another chrome revolver. Nice. We can use two of them. We can akimbo. Since we don't have any money, uh, any money, any ammo, we can just, um, you know, we can only use it to look cool, which is enough, you know. We can cosplay as Lara Croft a little bit. Okay. So, I think we're done here. I think we're done here. There's a few dreadroots left. I'm going to just destroy those. Just in the hopes of getting some more tubers. Let's eat something. No tubers, no tubers. Okay. All right. That's another jilted lover. Take that out. Yeah, that's it. All right. So now we're going to take the river south. You know, just the other way around. Oh no, this is a mushroom area. Okay, let's be careful not to get ourselves infected by mushroom spores. And we might just try to skip most of this area. Oh jeez, it's a pretty dense mushroom area as well. I do not like that. I do not want a fungal infection actually. It's a hassle to get rid of. <coughs> okay, there's one of the spore shooters. So we do not want to step next to that because it's going to shoot its spores. It's going to be unpleasant. Problem is we can't see very far. And there's some salt weep here. Weeps are just mushrooms that produce liquids around them so we can use that to actually get a bunch of salt and i will do that it's just salt collect liquid in a water skin yeah it's more salt collect liquid we can cook with salt it's kind of interesting that salt is actually counted as a liquid in this it kind of has to be on account of, on account of how it works uh, but yeah, we're not going to explore that area any longer. I do not want to risk getting a fungal infection. Again, it's pretty unpleasant to have. It can be actually useful for a bit, but at some point you're going to want to get rid of it. And especially this early in the game, it's going to take a long while to get rid of it. 
So, no. Let's just try to avoid that. Alright. Level 7. Neato. Okay. Um, no, I'm going to put that into heightened quickness. We're going to get dueling stance. So now we're kind of actually done with, uh, with the long blade tree. We don't actually need any of the other things. So we're just going to file that away. Get other stuff next. Uh, uh, can put ourselves into the dueling stance. I think probably just for running around, staying in... Dueling stance, plus two, three to hit while wielding a long blade, yeah. This gives us additional dodge value. So defensive stance is kind of nice. We can, oh shit, no! Jesus Christ, what was that? Fungus ridden giant centipede. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's a new thing. I took damage from the spores, but I did not get itchy skin. So we did not get an infection. Crikey, the RNG favored us. I did not know that that was a thing. That that was a thing. Fungus ridden snapjaw warrior. We need to not engage with any of these folks. Are you fungus ridden? No. Okay. What are you? Just a giant centipede. Okay. Crikey. All right. And there's the corpse that we're looking for. Okay, so we haven't really actually missed anything. That's very good. Yeah. Let's just avoid the fungus infection. Like that, that's pretty unlucky actually to have an early fungus patch. But we've been okay. All right, good. Ooh, glow moth. Let's get rid of the glow moth. It's dangerous. Okay. Let's not die. Let's not die. Let's rest up. Let's explore the rest of this map. Where's that spider? Spider's gone away. Spidey. It's that iron longsword. Okay. All right. Yeah, I got kind of lucky there. I could have gotten a fungus infection from that. Like if you if you get hit by spores, it's actually pretty likely that that happens. I think it's actually more likely to happen than it is likely to not happen. So let's get more to the legs to five. Okay. Basically, we got as far as we got in the first run now. Wow, that snuck up on me. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's recharge our electrical discharge and murder this cra these crabs with it. They have a lot of armor for this early in the game. So they are a prime candidate for getting murdered with the electrical discharge. It just goes a lot faster. The electrical discharge ignores AV, so. Alright, here we go. Here we go. And there's that corpse that I want to get. We got a minus helmet, a pickaxe, a small trinket, and cybernetic credits. So, uh. This is a small sphere of negative weight, which is negative weight. So it enables us to carry more. It's kind of, it's quite nice, actually. It's a stun rod that we don't need. And we have the miner's helmet. We're going to equip that instead of the no worm skull. 
and it's a light source that is actually better than the torch. So we're going to extinguish the torch, we're going to remove it. And uh, yeah, it's quite nice. Can now look a bit further. The torches aren't great. So until we find glow spheres, the miner's helmet is going to do us some good, essentially. Later on in the game, there's going to be better light sources, obviously. But uh, for now, yeah. At some point, we're going to also want to put on like some decent helmets. Stuff like that. Jesus. Don't die here, Jay. Okay. All right. Let's recharge. We're level eight. Got the miner's helmet. We did not get a fungal infection. You know, sounds like a Monday. And, uh, yeah. Ooh. Health has dropped. Yeah, in the very early game, these, um... These giant centipedes can actually do a, do a little bit of damage. Can actually, uh, sting quite a bit. Oh wow, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, F stain robes, I think it's a body armor, yeah. Leather cap, anything good here? No, it's just a bunch of stuff. One of these creepy gentling masks. Copper nugget. Okay. Level 9, very good. Destroy these, very good. Destroy these, very good. Alright. I'm going to put this one into intelligence. And yeah, we cannot advance that yet. So we're going to put this into heightened quickness for the time being. Just get that up. Get butchery, get spicer. Nope. Do a little zippy zap. Little murder murder. And here we go. Oh, jeez. Get impaled by a young ivory at low health. That is trouble, but we're okay. We can rest back up again. We're famished. We're going to make some food. Whip up a meal, plus for quickness, nice. Even more quickness. Although just for one day. Okay, this is a fungus area down there. We're not gonna go there. What was that? Did that say... I read there. I read something there that... No. I think I saw it wrong. I thought I read something in the message window that disconcerted me for a quick moment, but it's okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't what I thought I saw. Okay. All right. Ah, it feels good to be back, folks, actually. It really feels good to be back. I'm sorry for the long break, but you know... Again, I've said that a few times, but I'm not... A professional streamer. I don't really make a, make money from this, or make a living from this. Rather, I do sometimes make a bit of money from this. Like YouTube transferred me like a hundred bucks a while ago, which was kind of nice. Like that was, yeah. It's not. Again, when it's n when it's nothing that you live off. Uh, just getting a random hundred bucks is kind of neat. It's kind of awesome, actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had to, I had to have other priorities for the time being. 
And things have settled down a little bit. So, yeah. I've had the urge to get back to, you know, to making videos and streaming a little bit. And uh, I am quite enjoying it right now to do this again. Maybe also other stuff than Caves of Good, you know? Don't need to only play Caves of Good. I have some plans, actually. For some other things that I want to do. But I feel like I kind of have to settle back into sort of a routine that allows me to do this with regularity, you know, with sort of a, in a more regular frequency. Let's see. Let's see how this shakes out. Again, I'm sorry for everybody whomst uh, I was ghosting, essentially. But yeah. Okay. But I'm back for now. I'm going to try to record a bit more. There's also also always a thing that like the longer I was away from it's just a stupid mental thing that I have but the longer I was away from doing this the harder it became for me sort of mentally to come back. You know? Like this. I didn't actually feel this way but there was a, a certain thing that was like hey you're letting people down i think and that just kind of blocked me even further that's just like a that's just one of those hang-ups that i've always had which I, I i realize that i'm not right like that i don't owe anybody anything actually um while i'm extremely grateful for everybody who enjoys watching my videos of course i also realize that uh this does not result in any, like, actual obligation to me. Something... A lead slug from the southeast. Okay, this might be a slug snout. This might be a slug snout. So we're not gonna bother, actually. Did anybody... Anywhere close? No. I think it's not a slug snout. It is a... Are we in dueling stance? Yes, we are. Oh, it is a slug snout. Shit. Okay, let's kill it. Ah, oh, we killed it. Awesome. Okay, good. I thought it, if it might have been... If it might have been a turret, we could have disarmed it, but... Okay. Uh, five lead slugs. I mean, we can reload the revolvers that we have now with the lead slugs that we found. Okay. But yeah. Like, it's just like, this is just a process that I enjoy. And that's why I want to keep doing it. it it's great. It's awesome. I think it's fun to do this. There's a small... Okay. I don't want to do this out of sort of a feeling of obligation. Essentially. And I don't. <laughs> right? Uh, let's stick with the albino monkey braid. Okay. Had another chrome revolver, which we don't need, but uh, weaponry, like guns, are always great trade goods. They are pretty expensive. It's their technology, and that's always expensive in the in the world of CUD. That's worth a lot. They're considered artifacts. So... Yeah. Probably use them for some good old-fashioned trading. Jesus Christ, what's going on here? Level 10. That's good. Yeah, this this went a lot better than the first one. <laughs> okay, let's get multiple legs. Let's get Carbide Chef. And now we can actually get cracking with cooking and gathering. 
Ah, that's a weird artifact. That's a flaming iron longsword. Yeah, no. Don't need to pick that up, actually. Need to be a bit careful with my electrical discharge, because I don't want to make that slum uh, that beetle bum hostile. Oh, there's also a slumbling. There's a lot going on there. It would be stupid if I died here, so maybe I should just... The problem is the stairs are going to be somewhere behind this. Yeah, I can actually see them. They are... Oops. Crikey, that was steam. Um, I don't know why I say crikey at this point. I know that it has kind of unfortunate sort of posh British connotations. I'm neither posh nor British. Uh, but I don't know why I picked this up to say crikey. I really don't. I think it might have been sort of like... Saying, oh shit, slumber, uh, Slugsnout, okay, Slugsnout is dead, good. Um, it might have been something like saying something ironically and then transitioning into sort of it turning into an actual habit. So yeah, I don't know, whatever. Okay. All right, let's duck into this alcove here to rest up. Here we go. Okay, now we're essentially underneath Jopper, and we just need to go back upstairs. And I will probably end this recording at that point. But yeah, it's kind of yeah, that's kind of good. That's sort of my little "Hey, I'm back" statement. Why not? Right? Let's just start another, start a new sub season of Caves of Good. And, uh, oh jeez, there's an open cryo chamber here, a broken cryo chamber. There doesn't seem to be anything around here that might have been in that cryo chamber. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, just take this as my hey, I'm back. I'm going to keep recording stuff. I'm also going to be, this is just a recording. I'm not actually streaming this right now. But I will be back on the Twitches as well. I've been gaining followers on Twitch all the time throughout my absence. Which is kind of probably just folks clicking links on my YouTube videos. So thank you for everybody who followed me on Twitch. I say in a video that is not going to turn up on Twitch. Um, but yeah. Oh, let's whip up a meal for now. Just keep collecting ingredients. All right, let's keep going up. We're getting there, getting back to, back to Joppa. Getting closer. Just two more. Two more areas to traverse. They're pretty low level. Usually don't run into any. Yeah, I've run into spicy stuff on these levels, on these maps here. So I don't want to rule that out, but usually you don't. But in case of cut, everything is usually, right? Like, usually you don't encounter rhinoxes around Joppa. But I have actually encountered a rhinox around Joppa before. If I remember correctly. But I think I do. Like, in, in sort of the, the marshes. Like, weird shit can happen in Joppa. It is extremely unlikely, but it can... Or in Joppa, in case of Kurt. It's extremely unlikely, but it can happen. And that's what makes it so exciting. Okay. That's it. Let's go up. And this is the last one.
Okay. Alright, that's good. Almost there. I know where the stairs are. These stairs are always in the same spot. They're gonna be somewhere around here. Because they're going to lead to the place in Joppa. The little river thing. See? There we go. There we go. And here we are. It's always in this spot. And stairs are consistent in the case of Cud. You have a small box. Can you identify this for me? Yeah. Have that water, why not? It's a tattoo gun. Tattoo gun is a small box. Interesting. Wouldn't have expected that. Uh, what is that small trinket? Meet at chem cell. Okay. Freezing bronze battle axe. With a chem cell in it. Let's remove that. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. And he wants a wire now. That's going to be the next quest that we're going to do. But again, I'm probably going to stop here. Let me see. We're going to get this. Yeah. That inventory has not refreshed yet. We yeah, found some books, which is good. Let's get a bit more of this stuff. And by this stuff, I mean water. Okay, this this is good. Uh, let's get rid of the torches. I don't think we're going to use the torches anymore. We're going to stick with the... We're going to stick with the miner's helmet before... Until we get like a glow sphere, something like that. All right, give me that water. We have 100 rounds of water. I like to have like around 200 generally. But... Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get that, especially with the character that uses a lot of water like this one. Let's quickly go here and finish that quest. Here we go. So, self injector, Uber Nostrum injector. There we go. And that's the fix it spray foam. We can use that to fix something, an, an item that is broken. Our chamber is cracked, but that's going to fix itself after a while. Yeah, I think this run is off to a good start. With the one hiccup, the one death hiccup we had in between. But uh, yeah, we're going to get there. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for tuning back in. If anybody does after my prolonged absence. Again, I feel good about being back in this game or being back recording stuff streaming stuff uh, i'll try to do this on a more regular cadence again again it's uh you know things life situation stuff is different for me than it was a few months ago but uh, I wanna, I wanna do this. I wanna do this. This is good. This is good for my, for me mentally, actually. Like I feel good. This makes me feel good. So, yeah. All right. Thanks everybody. Thank you for your continued support of my dumb stuff. And see you next time. Bye bye.